Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another Real Madrid review. This is the review to Atletico Madrid 3, Real Madrid 1. A game that I thought we weren't gonna dominate this game, but I thought that we would at least, you know, get away through it. Um, but it seemed like when we went on the pitch, we just didn't have that kind of energy. We just didn't have that in us that, you know, we needed. And instead, it was Atletico Madrid and their fans really, 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 you know, um, getting the atmosphere, getting the team, getting to the back of the team, supporting the team, supporting the players on the pitch. And sometimes you need this spirit. You need that you know, extra bit of motivation from the fans, you know, when there's 50, 60,000 people, you know, backing up your team, you'll obviously be a massive uh, morale support. But we can't use this as an, ex an, ex as an excuse to performing poorly because we're going to have to play Barcelona home and away, but we still have to play them away, right? We're going to have to play Napoli in our next game away. We're going to go to Braga away. We're going to have to go to Union Berlin away. We still have a lot of games. And if we do make it out of our group, we have to eventually play the top teams away from home. So, there is no excuse that going away from home, we should be playing the way that we have been and we did. You know, there's no excuse to how we went away against Atletico and perform. There's just no excuse. And I feel like this has gotten too much. Now, yes, when we have been winning the last few games, we have been saying, look, it's a good performance, it's a good result. But we've also been saying that the lack of a number nine is going to hurt us. Now, this time last year, we won against Atletico away 2-1, right? And we had Benzema, and even though he didn't score, I don't believe, I think it was Vinicius and Rodrigo who both scored, at least we know we had that 9 who was going to attack the opportunities, who was going to be there to finish up the opportunities. You look at how we play, we had Bellingham up top with Rodrigo, we had a diamond chip midfield of Modric um, with Cruz, um, who has it? We, we did start so many involved in it, didn't we? But that midfield was getting overrun by Atletico, right? Because I think Jude Bellingham is better in midfield. That's just where he plays. He's a centre midfielder and that's where he plays. But recently he's been deployed as an attacking midfielder and that's alright. And he's been getting in positions to score, like a striker, and that's alright. But for Ancelotti to pick his team and to pick Bellingham as the striker, it's just too much, right? It's too much. This lack of striker is too much. And secondly, we have Jose Lu on the bench. He scored last game in La Liga against Real Sociedad. He scored the game earlier against Hatafe. And guess what? Another player that has been performing gets dropped. Because Bellingham is a good player, yeah, but we see him as a striker, apparently. Now, this is where the haters come in. Because the haters will be saying, and I've seen many, many people online saying, look, Bellingham is arrogant. No, he's not arrogant. Yes, he might be overhyped. Yes, he might be a bit overrated sometimes. But guess what? The only reason why a lot of fans, especially... Real Madrid fans, but a lot of fans in general rate him that much is because he has had to do what a player like Benzema has had to do and he's done well, right? That is not him being arrogant, he's just doing what he's doing. You know, Bellingham isn't coming online saying, you know what, I'm the best player in the world. No, he's not saying that, he's not doing that. He, in fact, he's a young player who is still mature, he is, you know, not full of himself, he's, you know, obviously respectful. Um, self-disciplined he's not arrogant in no ways 
But I do think that overall, in football, fans see one very good performance and we hype it too much, right? I've seen fans saying, you know what, with Bellingham, we don't need a number nine. I never said that. I've said that, look, Bellingham has been doing what he's been doing. He has scored many, many goals for us so far. But we still need a number nine to get the goals. And today, against Atletico Madrid, it proved exactly what I was saying. It proved that the lack of a number nine, the lack of a striker, is deeply, deeply hurting, hurting us when we are trying to play against the top teams. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but if you look at our start this season so far, we have not played a massive, massive team yet. And when we do play a big team like Atletico, we get punished. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. And partly the players are definitely at fault. Right, surely, yeah, we were horrible. But I think Ancelotti has to take the blame too. Right? I think Jose Lu getting dropped for Bellingham at striker was a mistake. I felt like he he went too old school. He was like, I need to have both Modric and Cruz on the mid in the midfield. I need to have both experienced players. Yes, you can have both Modric and Cruz. Yes, you can play Modric and Cruz, but for him to play Modric as the 10 meant that, you know, Bellingham obviously could not be dropped. And where was he going to play? So, Ancelotti has to be partly blamed. And then we go back up to the top. The striker. The top. You know, the top. Right? Where is the striker? Because, for all we know, and we all know this, Real Madrid spent three months trying to get Kylian Mbappe, right? And guess what? They did not get Mbappe. He's now staying in PSG, and he's firing. He's doing very, very well, and he seems like he's happy there. And guess what? He's going to sell a new contract again. I mean, what's this crazy fantasy obsession with Mbappe? I mean, oh my gosh, with Mr. on Haaland, with Mr. on Harry Kane for Kylian Mbappe. And he's not even, you know, pushing to get this move done. And sometimes you have to wonder, does Mbappe actually want to join Real Madrid? Is it actually his boyhood club? Is it actually the team that he wants to join? Who knows? But Let's talk about the goals, right? All three Atletico Madrid goals are headers. First goal, Morata, four minutes in. We let uh, the cross go in. Morata's header, I don't think there was much on this header that Kepa could have done. 1-0, four minutes. Second header, Griezmann again. But this header wasn't even that powerful. Griezmann's header wasn't that powerful. I thought Kepa just stood there watching the ball go in. I felt like he should have saved this one, Kepa. I think this has to be partly blamed on him as well. And then we get a go back, okay? 35 minutes in, Tony Cruz, well done. He didn't have time, you know, to, he did, to take his time and, you know, shoot. He had the shot, and he did, and he scored. Good go. 2-1 down. Okay, maybe let's claw something back. Maybe we can try to keep ourselves in this game for another 15-20 minutes. Maybe try to push for a draw. But at least, you know, not go 3-1 down, right? No. Straight away, 47-48 minutes in. 3-1 down. Embarrassing. We were outplayed from Atletico. You can see that Simeone, going to this game, his strategy... Knowing that we had Rudiger and Alaba at centre back was to get across in through the wings, whether that be Samuelino or whether that be the full backs, whether that be Anton Griezmann trying to get in as well, to get across in and for Morata to head it in. He scored two headers. Alvaro Morata came back, maybe not came back to the Bernabeu, but came back against Real Madrid and scored two headers. That is just the moral of the story. Really, there's nothing difficult and nothing hard to understand. And knowing that they have got three headers, it isn't too hard to tell what the game plan was from Simeone. 
to get Murata isolated, to get the ball onto the wings, to drag our players onto the wings, to send a good cross in, and because you basically have Alaba marking Murata, it's a simple header. And, you know, Kepa can't really do anything about two of them, but I think the second one, he should have really, really tried. He just stood there. Overall, we were outclassed. We were outplayed by Atletico Madrid. And whether that be a tactical thing, whether that be dropping players that we shouldn't have, whether that be the players maybe not giving it their all, maybe that being the lack of a striker, you look at what happened from the top of the club to the bottom of the club, there is definitely works to be done. There is definitely works that we have to do and we have to change. Because after this, we have, we have Las Palmas at home, right? You would expect Real Madrid to win that, surely, hopefully. And then you have, I believe, is it Girona away? Um, and I think we have Napoli away as well, afterwards. So, if two more La Liga games, right? And guess what? The next two, you've got Las Palmas should be a win, but who knows? And Girona, who are second. Girona and Barcelona have 16 points. Real Madrid have 15, right, in six games. Now, five wins and loss. Barcelona and Girona, five wins and a draw. Obviously, one point clear. But I think it's a big slap in the face of these players. That is it because we didn't try, or is it because we just weren't at it, or you know, we just didn't have enough? And I hope that this is a wake up call to not just the players, but everyone that a striker has to be a priority. And Immediately after the game, there were more reports suggesting that Real Madrid are not, you know, looking to sign a striker in January. Yeah. But, look, it's a bad, bad defeat, of course. You're losing to a rivals, you know. I still think Barcelona are our biggest rivals, but you're losing to a big rivals, let's be honest. And the way we lost, it wasn't a 1-0 loss, it wasn't a 2-1 loss. We went 2-0 down, and we could have been 3-0 down. And we could have lost this more. We could have lost this more. But it really is a wake up call really that we start putting the act together and not let this be another season where, you know, we probably finish third in the Liga and we make it to the quarterfinals of the Champions League at most. But then again, you know, we do kinda of want that to happen now, Real Madrid fans. I feel like Real Madrid fans have this Thought now thinking if this happens, surely Florentino Perez and the board do indeed sell a striker. Let's hope. Let, let, I mean, let's see what happens. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's review. Hit the like button, and stay subscribe, turn the channel on already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pish.